the war was on. This was in 1944. James Pride remembers 1944. It was his senior year at Armstrong Technical High School in Washington, D.C. He was fascinated by the newsreel stories of World War II flight missions. I had been watching the 99th Pursuit Squadron in Europe in the newspapers, and I decided I wanted to be one of them. The 99th was a segregated, all-colored U.S. Army Air Corps squadron known as the Tuskegee Airmen. I read about them in the newspapers. Every African-American newspaper had an article, almost every edition, about the guys who were flying in Italy or Africa, where, wherever they happened to be. He wanted to be one of them. But what did he know about the Army Air Corps? Only that they flew airplanes and I wanted to fly airplanes. He would later learn the U.S. Army in the early 40s was viciously Jim Crow. During that time, over 100,000 African Americans were serving in the racially segregated Army, but mostly in the infantry, a small and separate program for training a few, quote, colored pilots for the Army Air Corps was a somewhat limited response by the Army to an order apparently from the Roosevelt White House and more specifically, some would say, from a push from First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. It turned out for many of the Army's brass to be an unexpected success, but it did little to change the Army's policy on race, still greatly influenced by a 1925 Army College report. There was a 1925 study done by the military at uh, Fort McNair they said African Americans were unable to do technical jobs. They could not do hard jobs. That report suggested that not only were blacks of inferior intelligence, but as soldiers, they could not and would not fight. Despite the fact that African Americans had fought in every war that the U.S. had been in, including the War of Independence. But at 17, in 1944, James Pride felt things were changing. Tuskegee pilots, as with all pilots in the Air Corps, were officers in rank. He wanted to be an officer and fight for his country the from the Air air. air. I enlisted at 17 and a half years old, and I was inducted into the Army Air Corps at 18 in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. And then I got on a train to go to Mississippi. They were loaded up on segregated train cars and arrived in Mississippi to accommodations that were separate and certainly not equal. Black enlisted men rarely saw the white officers in charge. We had a different mess hall, PX if you wanted to go, and a different recreation center. James Pride was in the Army now, but turned down with no explanation for pilot training he had hoped for. I was very unhappy that I didn't get to fly. You just be a pilot. And I still don't know why, because I passed the test with, with a rating high enough that I got my name in the Washington Post as having made the highest score on the test of anybody coming out of Washington. He was sent instead for training as a flight crew mechanic and radio operator. Hell-bent on being the best at whatever he did, he became a skilled mechanic and crackerjack radio operator, earning two sets of silver wings. Stationed eventually at Chanute Field, where white pilots were training and needing flight hours, they needed him. No Air Corps pilot could fly without a mechanic and radio operator on board. I worked as a line radio operator, the only African-American on the flight line. He flew 1,600 flight hours at Chanute, but in the back of the plane. There's a pilot, co-pilot seat, and the radio operator sits right behind them, separated by a partial wall. He saw white enlisted men move up to higher ranks and better jobs, but James Pride, like other black Americans, was virtually invisible when it came to promotion. The message wasn't hard to read. If you weren't white, you weren't worthy but a different message would come through Morse code that would change his life.